Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Believe it or not, buddy to my left, Jeremy Hart, no relation, maybe relation. We don't, I don't know. know who my dad is. We don't know. I really don't. Um, we uh, today was an interesting show. So we got to sit down with the incredible Mister Polly Shore. Polly Shore. Longtime comedian, longtime movie star, been doing stuff for a long time. Uh, ho- Hollywood comic royalty. Yeah, his his parents started the comedy store, one of the oldest comedy clubs in the world. And uh, man, everyone everyone uh, that's ever been a huge name has come from there. David Letterman, Jay Leno, uh, Richard Pryor, Tom Segura. Crystalia, new stuff, old stuff. Comics have been coming out of this place. Churning, it's the most famous comedians of all time have been coming right out of this place for a long time. So, uh, 1972. So we sit down with Mr. Polly Shore. We talk a little bit about his legacy, what he's working on, a movie that's coming out soon. And right now he is doing both comedy tours as well as one man show tours. So he is in Houston tonight. Dallas all weekend, two shows, Friday and Saturday, two shows each day. And then uh, in the rest of the month, he'll be uh, he'll be going to Indiana. And uh, then New Year's Eve, he'll be in Indianapolis. So you can get those tickets at polyshore.com. Uh, Polly Shore is also working on a few movies, the first of which coming out next year is Guest House. I'm excited about seeing it. Uh, it's it looks quite inter- entertaining. Bobby Lee's in it. I'm a huge Bobby Lee fan. So, um, and I mentioned Jeremy here. I didn't mention your wine. Let's talk about this for a minute. So legit, uh, Jeremy, you've worked in this industry for quite some time. Huge wine guy. I've known him as to be the wine guy. Uh, eat it, Rodney. And um, you came out with this wine last year. It's won some awards. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a wine from Tuscany, and it's uh, it's it's called Legit. It's kind of a a name that's a lot of people kind of write off as far as being something that's actually legitimate in the bottle. But that's kind of the the tongue in cheek of it is that it's a uh, it's in your face as far as the fact that you kind of have to acknowledge it and that it's a uh, but it's legitimately delicious it's legitimately delicious and that's sure. kind of like the short of it and that's uh where we're going with it and continuing with it so a tuscan cab and uh, it's pretty much gone now it's sold out no 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 we, st- we still have some so it's not completely sold out but uh we still have some but uh it's gotten to this one point where we're number 26 wine in the world for this year for the biggest publication number 26 wine in number the world. 26 so and i'm taking so, this home to my wife yeah drink it and drink it now and drink it in the next 10 years 20 years 30 years whatever it may be but uh standard kind of retails about 40 bucks 45 bucks and so uh h-e-b some independence here in houston across, h-e-b's got it h-e-b got it yeah. you know? If I knew that, I, we, we love buying wine from H-E-B. Yeah. So um, well, let's get to their ad reads real quick. Yep. This week's show is, as always, sponsored by Trilado Distill Artists and Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaben, Deanston, Lecheg, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and, of course, Scottish Leader. You can pick up the entire line at your local liquor store, or if you are a retailer, reach out to your United Wine and Spirits rep. And, of course, our friends over at Glass Rev Imports. Whiskey Neat is supported by the Inspired Spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Murray McDavid. The historic Colburn Distillery Whiskey Storehouse in the heart of Speyside is packed to the brim with whiskey casks. There, the whiskey team apply their crafts to age and finish, and, of course, they blend and bottle beautiful products from some of the best distilleries in scotland and yeah what we've got in front of us in fact you got to try this beautiful amroot sherry and uh how was it it's fantastic no, it's i love surprising people with this amroot sherry this is one of the best uh bottlings i've ever had from amroot and it is just exceptional beyond measure um the only thing that's kind of interesting is we don't do this in america but the uh picture of a pregnant woman on the back with a, a nice x through the back of it is kind of hilarious but um it's a good tattoo yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
So huge Amroot fans, uh, Murray McDavid, the wine is fantastic. We just have a, a conversation with Polly about everything he's working on and, and everything he, he has worked on. So, uh, And Katie, I'm warning you now, you did get a shout out. So uh, without further ado, I think that covers all of our bases. Houston Whiskey Social, we are now two months out exactly, a little less than two months out. February 8th, get your tickets at HoustonWhiskeySocial.com. Cheers. Ding. Cheers. Actually, go ahead. Let's do it. Boom. Polly, buddy. What's up? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Thanks for being on. Yeah, sorry I'm not drinking the wine. It's just a little early for me for wine. Oh, we we may. Just having some Smoothie King. We may push you into that. I'll tell you why. So I I grabbed a a bottle of, of whiskey from your birth year. Okay. This was actually bottled. The year you were born, so I well, figured we got to have a special pour. Not right now. We'll get to it at the end. I'm going to have a glass of wine, but I'm going to see what we can do about convincing you into that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you sold that at the secret group. We had them on recently. Dusty yeah. Rhodes. I saw your your cohort there carrying mm-hmm. a Dusty Rhodes shirt. He's my cohort. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to assume assistant or friend or, or what exactly. Cohort. Cohort. No, good. that's Josh Martin. He's awesome. He's a sweetheart. One of my fees, my feature act. Yeah. Yeah. Who's opening for you? Uh, Dusty with Dusty Rhodes, what is it? Dusty Christy Dusty Rhodes. Christy Rhodes. Mm-mm. No, I'm not sure. Sure. I'm not sure who they have. I'm sure Andrew will lock it in. Yeah. The uh, so you you're here in town now, and I thought it would be great for us to kind of talk about everything you've been working on. I listen. I'm a huge fan of your podcast. Mm. Uh, Random Rants has been something that's kind of evolved into this uh, this little bit of a beast. I mean, mm. it's it's now this super. Uh, I mean, I've been listening to all your podcasts. Mm. I've been listening to you since the last two. And then this one is now, it started off being like 15 minutes, mm. 20 minutes. Now it's like the yeah. last one was pretty long. Well, the, the first, when I first started, I mean, I've done, I've done, I think, what is it? Two other podcasts. No, actually, do, yeah, I did two other podcasts. I did the podcast uh, show. Interested, Interested podcast, which was me interviewing people and then them commenting on the interview. And that took too long to produce. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, you did like, the Whitney fuck, Cummings interview dude. and then had Chris on to comment on it. Yeah, it was like, but it was cool. You know, I, my, one of my favorite ones, excuse me, I have to burp. Sorry, I do that sometimes. <laughs> You've got, what do you call it, GERD? <clears throat> yeah, I think. I don't know what it is. TJ Miller so, told me that if uh, he he gave me something for that, because when you drink a lot of booze, it tends to cause the same thing. Uh-huh. And uh, something called mastic gum. Oh wow! So if you, I don't know if you want to try that mastic gum. It's like a, it's like a, a it's a gum. It's a supplement. It's a, a pill. Oh, so it's but a pill or is a, it a gum? It's a pill, but it's called mastic okay. gum. I don't know what it's made of, plant life or or whatever. But it's and a TJ takes it. TJ Miller takes it and told me Why to take it. Why does he take it? Burping. He burps yeah. too. Yeah. So so That's he right. yeah he gave it to me. I bought some. It was and it's it helps with that. Maybe it's from coffee. Sure. Maybe it's from coffee. So what the fuck was, oh yeah, the different, the different ones. So I did the interested and then I did the podcast show and then I did rants and then the rants first started just audio. Sure. You know, which was just me kind of going off whatever it is that I wanted to go off on, you know, cause like being alone, not, ha- not you know, married, none of that stuff. So sometimes, you know, as a comic, you know, you're by yourself. So it's like I, I have to rant on my stuff. So then it evolved into kind of this YouTube thing. And then from there, I'm like, fuck, how do I do a podcast where it's not just people sitting like this? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to interview people. And then I just started thinking, and I'm like, oh shit, I could put the camera here, I could put the camera there. Like a reality show. Yeah, yeah it's not like Big Brother vibe, you know? And then um, and then from there I got my switcher in there and we just started editing as we were going along and it was like, and it started working and now I just feel like there's something there. So I was telling you on the phone that I really enjoyed doing it so it doesn't feel like work, yeah. Sure, so. well that's the whole point. What I do mean, you think of my glasses, they're cool? Yeah, they're good, like, em. like yeah. a lot. <laughs> Should I wear them or keep them off? Whatever you want, man. You're, you're I get nervous. <laughs> Bob, I mean, Josh, what do I say? Uh, you know, show the people your face, bro. They might not want to see that shit. <laughs> you want know else with nervousness? Yeah. A little, little booze. <laughs> but thank you for having me on your on your whis- oh, whiskey thanks. podcast. Yeah, so. absolutely. I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to have a little pour here. You don't have to. Um, the, no, it's cool. The uh, Yeah, you called me last night. Uh, we, we talked. Mm-hmm. Um, Masturbated together. A little bit. You know, yeah. I'm a big little fan. Little phone of, sex. 
I'm a big fan of doing stuff for the story, so I took my clothes off while we were on the phone. That's, that's just good. so I can say we talked and I yeah. was naked. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Ginger's cool. I like ginger. Yeah, oh, yeah, I like the orange. The beer? Shit. Yeah, I like chicks and dudes that have ginger. Well, I, I hear you're a big fan of Asians as well. Obsessed with Obsessed Asians. Obsessed with That's Asians. My, it started with my mom, though, because my mom always had, like, Asians working at the bar at the store. Sure. She had, um, you know, it was, she's just loved Asians, and, and, you know, and I've always, I don't know what it is. It's like, I go to a Korean spa, you know? And I'm always surrounded with Asians. So no matter what type of mood I'm in, the second I get there, immediately I'm just happy. I don't know if it's their faces. I don't know what it is. The stress relief, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like just, well, just seeing Asians, you know, are fun fun to me. I well, like you and Asians. Bobby Lee, you guys you guys know each other as well. And I mean, yeah. he, he's he's been working there. In fact, a few of your podcast episodes were titled after Bobby Lee. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Now he won't call me back because he's so popular. I'm like, dude, put me on your podcast. He's like, I'll make a time when I can make a time for you. <laughs> no. I think that's how he sounds. No, he's, uh, <laughs> no, he just did a, uh, uh, um, he did a part in my movie Guest House, so I have a movie next year. We could talk about that later, but yeah, um, yeah he was nice enough to do that. So no, Bobby's doing great. You know, all these guys are doing great. Theo, Chris, Theo's killing Delia, right now. like yeah. all these guys. You know, it's just like really cool for me to see. You know what I mean? Well, that's you know, a, that's like your legacy. Wild, yeah, it's like the Wild West. Like everyone's kind of got their own thing, and everyone's kind of. It's cool. Like I drove by the, uh, was it the Wiltern Theater the other day and um, coming from the, the airport and I saw Theo Vaughn's coming there. So it's pretty cool, you know. I think he yeah. sold out the Wiltern as well. It's amazing. He's, uh, and he's someone that also deals, I, I think, with a tremendous amount of anxiety and stress. Yeah. It's, it's weird being so popular and then also not enjoying the popularity, the popularity yeah. right? So it's something that... Uh, I mean, he's dealing with it the best he can, but he's, I mean, he's, how do you not like Theo Vaughn? I mean, Theo Vaughn's the most lovable guy ever. So, but that, like I said, that's your legacy. I mean, the, the comedy store, mm -hmm. uh, you, I, I mentioned when we posted on Twitter that you were coming, that, that you're, you're royalty, man. You, mm. you, well, my mom and dad are. So I, you know, they're the ones that started it. So sure, like, sure. You know. But, you know, you, your impact on yeah. comedy is uh, everyone I told that was coming freaked mm -hmm. out. Oh, cool. You know, I mean, cool. I, and I actually, that leads me to, let's get to my first question. Because mm -hmm. I, I do have a, a. You can cut all that part out. That's all the other stuff we just talked about. If you want, <laughs> I mean, so we just get to the first question, right? We've well, well, it's, there's not a for, most of this is a formal conversation, but we're talking about your movies, there is something that I wanted to ask formally. Uh, it, it's something that you, you know you've you've been doing movies for mm. God 20, 30 years, twenty five years, yeah. and when asked about your favorite movies of what you've done, you often will cite. Uh, Biodome or uh, Son-in-Law as mm. being a big one. Mm. Why? My first official question to Polly Shore is: Why do you not uh, say that Encino Man's the best? Because you are definitely wrong for not saying Encino Man's the best. Mm. <laughs> Encino Man was such a big part of my childhood. Well, because Son-in-Law was a movie that took me out of the teen world and brought me into mainstream Middle America. Sure. Because it appealed to families. Families. And that's why I think that was the one. And it had such a good heart and such a good story. And it was so simple. And it's just like a really good feel good film that I think transcended like transcended like the MTV and Sino Man kind of kind of genre you know the Surfer uh, Dude, the Weasel. No, it was the the smaller audience. Son in law was the one that Tour, I toured all over the world with that film. Like Disney brought me over to uh, Australia and Japan and England, and I went everywhere. And that was like the thing that really, you know what I mean? It Opened was, the plus, world. And plus, it was like it was a hit, and I was above the title. And like Encino Man was like I was the third third lead on that, even though like my stuff was kind of interweaving. It wasn't really about my character; it was about the caveman. Yeah, Brendan. Yeah. So. Um, so son-in-law, you know, it's just, you know, I don't know, dude. I fucking love the kid in it and the girl and the man, the father. I thought Lane Smith is such a good was such a good actor and to play off of him was really was really fun. So I don't know. And then Biodome was a film that that you know, I just told myself I just want to, you know, because before you prepare for a film, you kind of get in that space of like, how do I want to come across? How do I want this character to be? And I always liked like Beavis and Butthead. Sure. You know, and I always wanted to do kind of like a live version of that. So like with, you know, Biodome, you know, I was just telling Steven, 
I'm like, let's just be insane. You know what I mean? Like over way the over top. the top. Yeah, and that's kind of like why well, I like that. So, but I liked I like all of them. I like the army movie. You know, I in liked, the army now. Yeah, in yeah. the army now. I like. Um, I don't know. I like all of them. You know. Well, the the um, the son-in-law in specific specifically still holds up I why is he that. speaking so much this guy i know I t- what the fuck what the fuck is this right guy now. even here for I, t- yeah. I told him sorry buddy i, t- I told him he's like a him. creepy guy that's like jerking off as i'm speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like yeah, yeah tell me about guys. the cheek chillers yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's real good yeah. no i'm serious no disrespect but no, what's no, your position here on the podcast uh, so, so he's I, gonna yeah. say something I, let me let me see something say something yeah. <laughs> creeper creeper yeah, right here. so he actually has an award-winning wine that he released is his, uh, his last name is actually the same as mine no relation no. that i know of but mm-hmm. uh he's got an award-winning wine and i know that you're not a heavy drinker so i thought a great wine that i like i like drinking just not at noon sure you know what i mean and then which I is a show tonight sure and- you know what I mean? Which which is actually surprising. We talked about this last night. You are relatively unscathed in the world of unscarred of of uh, the last three decades. You mm. nowadays you have someone like let's say Justin Bieber mm. or someone who gets super duper famous mm. at like seventeen, and then they go through mm. horrible bouts of, of issues. You yeah. <laughs> trying to Google and find a Poly Shore controversy? There's mm. not. There's not anything. Just no, my no small kids. penis. That's it. <laughs> Girls complaining like, oh, I thought he had a big dick. Oh, my God. It's two inches. I remember one time this girl, you know how everyone wants to send dick pics and shit? Sure. I swear to God. I sent it. I, I Someone Googled, else's? No, yeah. No, I Googled the smallest dick. If you Google the smallest dick, it's like tiny and it's, it's no offense, but it's got red hair on it. And, <laughs> and, and, uh. And, it, and it's hilarious because they have a ruler and they put a ruler on it and it's literally like a, ha- a half an inch. Sure. Oh and I God. sent that to this babe and then she stopped texting me back. <laughs> it's hilarious. If you ever want to like, you know, get rid of a chick, you know what I mean? And she's kind of like on you, just send a dick pic of like a really small penis and say, okay, well, babe, this is what we're working with. That's cool, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> You you would think that again just for the story that uh, she'd probably take one for the team just for the yeah, so she could say she slept with yeah, you yeah yeah but I mean no no marriages no kids no how how do you get through the nineties being Polly Shore without kids out there somewhere I don't know maybe my maybe I maybe my my semen is like all polluted or some <laughs> shit you know what I mean I don't know I never I I you know I never really you know. When I have sex, or if I ever have sex, or when I did have, I was, in, I think in my whole life, I maybe orgasm in two or three girls my whole life. Wow. I'm just not that guy. Sure. I'm not like a, a farmer, man. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, fuck it, shit, man. Uh, come. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know sure. what I mean? Guys just come in chicks like it's no big deal. You know what I mean? I mean, it, is it a big deal? <laughs> I mean, I'm not the guy to ask. I have four kids, but you know yeah. what I mean. It's like four, I have four kids too. So, <laughs> so you come, you well, you came in your chick a lot, right? I think obviously, I would, yeah. I mean, well, we've got it narrowed down to Proof. one or two causes, but we're not quite sure what causes <laughs> kids. Yeah. There's always Bad that, film. but there's always you're always kind of like throwback. You know, the thing is, is like it's weird because there's like pre cum that comes out too. <laughs> Do you know when you're having sex and you say to yourself, "Oh, I don't want to come in her." So then you have sex and you're like, oh shit, did I get a little pre-cum? Yeah. And if you ever think of that, what you do is you take it out and you let her suck it first <laughs> oh and get the pre-cum out just, and then start having sex again. You're like, okay, she got the pre-cum. I just realized how much of this episode we can actually use for radio. Oh, you yeah. can't use any of this? It's a podcast, <laughs> No, no, no. Right? It's, it, is, it is a podcast, but it airs on the radio. We had, so we had TJ Miller on and his opener is Cash Levy. Do you know Cash Levy? Uh-uh. He's, he's a he, him and TJ are like best friends. He's he features from every everywhere he goes, and Cash was basically told by a woman in the audience that he looks like a turtle, mm. and and he's bald, kind of looks oh, like a turtle, hilarious. right? So he he was hoping I got to see him. He sounds funny. He was hoping to be more tied to a more sexy animal like a tiger or mm-hmm. a lion, mm. and turtles have enormous enormous penises. Oh, and I was like, you should take it as a compliment. That turtles are so for the entire episode. Uh, T.J. Miller kept saying uh, turtle cock over and over again to the point that we couldn't use it for radio. But that's okay. <laughs> I have no obligation. I don't care if it. So you can cut it out though. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna we'll leave all that in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that's staying in for sure. All of that is staying in as if you didn't pull out. Okay. <laughs> Let's not Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, 
you have, and by the way, I found a movie. I try to do as much research to make sure that I'm, everyone knows Polly Shore, but I try to make sure that I'm up to date on what's going on in your world. And I found a movie that I didn't know that you did mm. that is actually, uh, is tremendous. It was mm. Whiskey Business. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I liked the movie. My, my wife and I watched it. It was, it was uh, 2012, 2013, mm-hmm. something like that. And I, it made me think that you would be more inclined to drink on air. But it, it, was, a, it was a decent movie. It mm. was funny watching you put on a New Jersey accent. That was pretty funny. I got to watch that again. Because I do these things and then I don't think about it. I even forgot I even did that movie. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, I did that movie. Yeah, that was great. I, the, I enjoyed it. The general premise is that he was a son of a, a Don of a mafia family mm. and uh, ends up having to run away from someone who wants to be next in line gotcha. and resorts to living, hiding out in Tennessee, making moonshine. Totally apropos of the show and, and, and seemed pretty interesting. So, yeah. uh, I, we, If you would have asked me what the premise of Whiskey Business was, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. I remember as a Jersey guy. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I enjoyed doing that movie. That was fun. That was for CMT. So, well, talk to yeah. me about what's what's coming out next year. Um, I have a, a movie called Guest House, where I play a guy that won't leave out of a guest house, and um, it's kind of like the movie Neighbors, or you know, or what's that movie with Michael Keaton? Uh, War of the Roses. Is that War of the mm-hmm. Roses? You know, it's kind of like where this 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 kind of good looking millennial couple they purchase this house come to find out my character, this guy, uh, 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 what's the fuck's his name? Um, shit. Oh yeah, Randy Cockfield. He's living in the back and I have like this beard and my hair's out here and I'm doing coke and, and I'm like having sex with chubby babes and I'm in the back and they go and they go like, they go like, oh, he's gonna leave. You know, the agent is like, oh, don't worry, he'll leave. And I never wind up leaving. Sure. So it turns into this huge feud. I'm having parties back there and then and then I don't want to tell you all the stuff that happens, sure. but it's like, but then there's like some heart at the end. There's like a really sweet message at the end, but I'm pretty proud of it. I should have brought the, um, the trailer for you to see, but it's not online yet. So it'll be out and I got a burp again. Sorry. Do it. Everyone's in it. Um, Bobby's in it. Punky's in it. Uh, Eric Griffin's in it. Love um, Eric Griffin. Shit. Oh yeah. Billy Zane's in it. Steve-O is in it. Wow. Chris Kattan is in it. Uh, the two leads are uh, Amy Amy Teagarden and Mike Castle, and they're two really good actors. Amy Teagarden, she was on uh, was it Friday Night Lights? You want to, any of your guys want to want to double check that? Yeah, and then Mike Castle, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's just like kind of this up and coming, really good comedic actor. Sure, and it was really fun to do, and and I'm really excited about it. It's rated R, so it's like a hard R. Um, and kind of like American Pie, you know, vibe. Sure. You know, and uh, I think it should come out like spring or summer next year. So cool. so I'm excited about that, you know. Will it be widespread? We'll be able to see it everywhere? <sighs> we'll see. Yeah? They're selling it right now, so. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you've got a pretty decent cast. I don't see why anybody would. Yeah. yeah? It's, a good, it's a good film, so I'm excited about well, that. You, and you haven't stopped working. I mean, you've, mm. you've literally, uh, I would say... Arguably, I feel like you've done more in the since 2010 than mm. you've ever done. Like it yeah. seems like you've been constantly, constantly putting out content, constantly mm. working films. You like you said CMT, uh, the podcasting. I, I've I've listened the documentary to documentary stuff. Yeah, the yeah, documentary, yeah, documentary stuff. Polly Shore stands stuff. alone. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, that was a super well received mm. documentary mm. about you. So it, it's it's something that uh, I also I just realized something else I was going to talk to you about. The uh, the episode of Joey Diaz's podcast, mm-hmm. huge fan of Joey Diaz. Yeah, and uh, that's that's when I like I've seen everything he does, but I heard he put you through the ringer a little bit, kind of. Well, I never had done gummies before. Uh, sure. So it was like he, you know I'm, I I you know you look at uh, a thing that's this big, you know that's this big, and you're like, there's no way this can Shaped affect like a teddy me. Bear. Yeah, yeah, there's no way this can affect me. He said something. That's good. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm just fucking. So no, no, so so no. You just eat it and you don't really think about it. And then I started doing the show with him, and then I literally couldn't speak, and then I had to leave. Yeah, he said. And then he even fucking let me. He let me even drive. I would have been like, dude, if you can't fucking speak, we can't let you drive. And then I was driving home back to Silver Lake, and I literally like was seeing shit. 
it was so scary, dude. I was fucking nervous, dude. Well, I think he was too. They they didn't air the episode. They they, yeah. they cut it off or, or deleted it or whatever. But basically, yeah, because they couldn't speak. Right. He was worried about you. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? And now I do gummies, but I do a certain amount, and you know, and it kind of like it's fine. I mean, but I don't know what he did. You, what? If you take like medicine, it's great. Well, I just you know don't I mean? know what size. You know, it's kind of like mushrooms. Well, it's you like legal. I mean? It's, it's like, like it's regulated to what the size is. So it's like this much is this much, and I know exactly. What, and I know exactly what's in it. And so, like that's I cover Colorado, so when I go there, it's 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 easy. It's like, well, I don't, literally bite like medicine and take it like medicine. Well, he and I know exactly where it's going to take me. He specifically stars of death or something. They mm-hmm. were like 150 milligram edibles, at mm-hmm. a, so they were super concentrated. See, no, absolutely not. I take ten. Yeah, ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ten's yeah, yeah. perfect. It's kind of like mushrooms. When I was a kid, I OD'd on mushrooms. I did one. I did it once. I was. Uh, I did a movie called Eighteen Again with George Burns. Sure. It was his uh, last film, and I played uh, uh, his grandson's best friend. And um, and at the rap party, the uh, the grips came up to me and was like, "Yo, dude, you want some shrooms?" So I was like, fuck, let's do this. So I did some shrooms. So your first time? Yeah, it was the first time. And then I started freaking out. My hands were sweating. I'm like, oh shit, George Burns and Red Buttons was there. And I was with this girl, Melissa Paul, that I had a crush on. And you know, and I drove home and I dropped her off somehow. And I went up to the bathroom of my mom's house and I started crying heavily. And then I went downstairs and my mom was in front of the rowing machine. She was like doing her exercises back in the old day. You had the rowing machine. And I started crying to her and then she started crying and, and it was just fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything just, about that, <laughs> it just sounds amazing. It sounds like so, a, the hangover. But the, the problem is with drugs is like, you know, just you don't know what, what the size to take. So you have to be with some, it's like acid. Like I want to try acid. I've never tried acid. You know what's called microdose? Yeah, just don't give it. Just get like it from Joey Diaz. <laughs> from who? <laughs> don't get it from Joey Diaz. Does he do acid? Well, he does everything. <laughs> he does acid. Josh, does he do acid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, allegedly, I would, I would we'll do, say that. I would do like a little like microdose. I heard, like up in um, was it Silicon Valley? I hear that you know a lot of these people to to program they microdose. You know, because sure. it opens up their mind and they can think better. And like, I would do that, but I would just have to be with someone that knows the the right amount to take. Sure. Yeah. So. Well, or, or Ari, I know Ari for sure does it. Ari Shafir, uh, yeah. and he's a, he's a uh, comedy store comic, right? Ari's been. No, he's the improv guy. Oh, oh, dang. <laughs> no, he started the story. Yeah. Yeah. So he and I know I know the backstory on Ari. Uh, yeah, he, he recently dosed Bert. I don't know if you know Bert Kreischer. <laughs> he bo- he did what? He dosed Bert. Oh wow. Yeah. So he he got uh, they did an episode of their podcast, and before they started, he wanted to do a shot. So he gave him Molly and oh, dosed his whiskey shit. with Molly, and then <laughs> while they recorded the episode, it kicked in, and Bert was like at home with his family, with his kids. His wife wasn't there, so there was like this whole frustration with each other because Ari dosed him oh so God. he didn't know he didn't know was he yeah. mad oh yeah there was a there was a big fallout but they've bird is and ari are doing everything they can to that's hilarious to, to, did you know that, to Josh? Resolve that. yeah that's yeah well, he drugged him it's hilarious oh my God. And, and i'm a fan of both of them but yeah so i wouldn't microdose with ari <laughs> see i'm scared to go around any of those guys now jesus christ they'll probably rape me and stick up thing in my asshole or something <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so you and that's something else you've not you've never been a big drug guy you're not a not a drug guy not a booze guy and 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 thirty years and you're, and you're like and you're like yeah okay he's boring get him off the show no no he's th- fucking boring he's an old Jew <laughs> that's what I'm the saying fuck? is fuck you're, you're super fascinating you've had a, a long storied mm. history in this business and you don't have any of the vices mm. I mean maybe I mean you do have a uh, reputation of being quite sexually uh, mm. uh, popular, mm. but uh, other than that, I mean, you've you know, you've you've. How do you get through life without? It's <laughs> kind of interesting too, because you obviously have the want. Have the what? The want. You want to try acid, even yeah. microdosing yeah. to a point, all that yeah. stuff. But like, you haven't pursued. You obviously can have access to this stuff fairly easily. Mm. So it's. I'm sure people. Would it's easy too. next step, but you still I just, haven't pursued. I think I, I grew up around. I grew up in Hollywood and Beverly Hills, and I don't know if that means anything because there's people that grew up in like small towns that grew up around crazy fucking people too. Sure. But I mean, in my in my business and around where I was going through and all the stuff that I saw, like all I saw were drugs. You know what I mean? So it's just like 
I always had this saying, and I something that I came up with, and I th- say it's okay to dance with the devil, don't become the devil. Meaning it's okay to have fun at the party, just don't, but become. don't become the party. And that's what Sam Kennison did that I never liked. That's you right. Know? He babysitted you. Yeah. He well, I wouldn't say babysitted me, but I would follow him around. Like I went everywhere he went. But he was one of those guys that that loved to do coke, you know, and loved to party, but and not have and not stop the party. You know what I mean? As opposed to doing one line, maybe two lines, and going to sleep at three or four, he would go, keep going. And I had a couple of those times that I did that with him. You and know? you hated it. Well, it's just not right. Yeah. You know what I mean? After a while, it's just kind of like gross. You know, when you're a it's kid. A dorky drug. Man. But it's when awful. you're a kid and you're trying to fit in, like I was trying to fit in with him, and I thought it was cool. There were porn stars around and strippers and playmates and rock stars. Sam was hanging out with Billy Idol. You know, and, and, and Joe Walsh, you know what I mean? And fucking, it was cool. So it was like, let's try a little, you know? And that's kind of what it was. But it wasn't like, you know, Sam was the kind of guy that you'd get invited to one of his parties and then there would just be drugs. And if you try to leave, he'd like get in front of the door. Make a thing about it. And make he'd be like, he'd like, party goalie, party goalie. And he'd like rip his shirt out. And his, he had the worst <laughs> breath. Sam had the fucking worst breath. So like when you would, when you would talk with him, yo, when you would talk with him, like I had a ha, uh, 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 and then I'd be like, okay, go on, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, uh huh, yeah. Go on, yeah, uh huh. That's how it was. It's like death. Oh my god, dude, he had the worst breath. <laughs> you know, it was fucking hilarious. But, um, you know, he had that, you know, he was, you know, he lived that life. You know, if you look at his stand up, you could see how much it changed. If you look at his first Letterman appearance and then you look at his uh, his last HBO special they did at the Wiltern, yeah. you can see the dramatic difference. And he was saying that he's not on drugs, but he was on drugs. Like people that like say they're not on drugs and they are on drugs or it's fucked up especially if you're an addict those are the ones you know that I mean? tend to have you know your mitch Hedbergs or like they, they put out a very clean appearance but then behind closed doors those are the ones who are that are dangerous because yeah. you have no idea what's going on and how far they're taking it yeah so i'm happy the whole like cannabis marijuana blah 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 world is kind of in our psyche now because i think what is going to wind up happening is the pharmaceutical companies are going to slowly kind of deteriorate. And I think the CBD fucking world is going to slowly like, like I, I got to burp again. Sorry. Go ahead. I think that, um, you know, I, I used to take uh, to help sleep it's like Ambien. You guys heard of Ambien? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mess with that stuff. Yeah. But, you it know, I always take like a, a little bit of it. It's kind of a psychological thing. Oh, I feel like I have a sleep med in me and it can help me sleep, relax. So, and now, because of the whole CBD world, now I take like a, a small little, like, I don't even know what the fuck it's called, but it's like a, a CBD pill. And then helps a little sleep. drops and a little drops and kind of like just helps me sleep. And then when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel groggy or anything like that. So I think like, I think the more people learn about that type of stuff, I think it's going to be better for everyone because I think it's just healthy, healthier. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, it's the, the, healthy organic version of of the the heavily pharmaceutical stuff that we've been taking for years that have that's been shown to cause a tremendous yeah. amount of problems with yeah. people and what's crazy in la there's a, a weed cafe so you it's like amsterdam where you can go in now it's called low, low cafe you go in there and you can buy weed you can smoke weed there you can smoke you can have food there right and it's like everyone is stoned even the waitresses are stoned you know, like they come over and she's like, am I your waitress? I'm like, shit, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. And you know what? You got to be careful, though, because you don't want to get pulled over for smoking and driving because the cops, they hang out. Like I got pulled over for smoking and driving. Did you get yeah, in trouble? Yeah. What they did is they didn't give me a breathalyzer like this. They put a, a, a whole box of donuts in front of me <laughs> and a carton of milk. And if you eat it, then you get arrested. <laughs> I got arrested six times last week, bro. All right. Edit. Commercial. Sorry. Just see one of my jokes. That was pretty bad. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. The uh, By the way, speaking of which, I noticed looking on your website that you've got uh, 
two different things. You're, you are doing stand up in some cities, mm-hmm. but also doing a one man show. It's, what's yeah. talk to me about that? Josh, can you explain the one man show? Like this to be a cameo? No, no, no. Come here, come here for a sec. I just want Josh to get a little stage screen time. time? Stage time? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, hey guys. No, no. Come here. What's sit your last right name, here. Josh? Uh, Josh right Martin. Josh yeah, Martin. Just sit right here and come from the heart, because I don't like talking about the one man show. You talk about it. And he's got a speech impediment, so this will be good. Go tell him. Um. Yeah. So ask him about it first. <laughs> so, first so, 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 Polly, tell me about your one man show. What's going on there? Um, it's just a one man show. It's just uh, stories about my life uh, as a kid. So I grew up. Uh, at at the comedy store, sure, and um, so I was surrounded by a bunch of comics. So stories of my experience as a kid with these comics, uh, stories about my mom during different moments of the comedy store history, uh, times of, of me at the Playboy Mansion, sure, and um, MTV and, and stuff. MTV stuff, how I got on MTV, and um, my pop lock and friends, sugar pop. Uh, I was a good dancer. I knew how to pop lock, and um. Yeah, so it's just it's in about an hour fifteen, hour twenty five, and it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just it's a great stories. There's music involved, uh, a lot of dancing on stage, and it's it's very fun. It's it's pretty good, you know. It's I'm excited to see it. I'll be there tonight, by the way. That was cool. I just wanted to give him a little screen. Sure, sure, this sure. The, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Speaking of uh, being honest, you had a. Uh, I like the idea, first of all, of a one man show, but I, you had a. I don't know if you got any feedback on this or not, but a very, very honest and beautiful conversation with Joe Rogan on his show. Mm. That interview was so raw and, and a peek behind everything you've been through mm. uh, that. It, I, it was amazing. Like mm. I, I, I've I've showed people about it. I've talked. I've showed people the interview. I've talked to people about it. It was something that I. It's kind of a peek into random rants. It's like mm. this honest moment of just what's going through your head, mm. how you're feeling, and I. I just wanted to tell you that I thought it was fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. The just the honesty of how things with with the three movie deal mm. and, and and what what's going through your head is just yeah. It was just you know it, you know the thing is is like. You know, my life is cool now, you know what I mean? Like, I have a lot of awesome stuff that are, are going on. I have some personal shit that's still fucking with me with my parents dying and my sister died and my best friend Gary died and all this shit happened in a year and I'm in a very emotional person, you know, I'm very, you know, heavily emotional. So it's hard for me to just kind of, I'm not Donald Trump where I can just like fucking move forward like that didn't happen. Sure. So I kind of carry that and anyone that, parents die you know they know what i'm talking about it's fucking weird i don't care how old your fucking parents are when they're dead and you can't talk to them and i have no relationship with my siblings and i'm pretty much by myself it's fucking hard it's weird it's fucking hard but i don't want i'm not a victim you know what i mean but it's definitely a struggle every single day for me to 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 you know to move forward and and um and it's hard but i'm 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 getting through it you know like i say i exercise i hang out with asians you know what i mean (laughs) they make me happy and i do my shows and and i got a lot of love from people every everywhere i travel and that keeps me going and and i love doing what i do so you know you know in life you have to look about what you have not what you don't have and i think that's really important you know so so with the movies you know that i did you know Everyone's life, I think, when they first start is so exciting. You know what I mean? Like in your 20s, you're like, oh shit, this is my 20s. Like, I don't care if you're in fucking college, it's exciting. Even people that are older now and they look back on, they look back on their college years, like, dude, those are the best years. Because it is. You know what I mean? It just is. It's like, yeah, you now you got a family and kids and like, that's cool too. But fuck, you got like this and I know, that. I they're that, the worst. That. Like if you're if you're a night if you're a knucklehead in your twenties it's okay you know you're like in your twenties so for me you know I was doing my movies and I was doing MTV and but in my twenties so it was just there was this kind of carefree spirit I had my mom I had my dad I had a relationship with my siblings you know it was like very like you know everything was good yeah it was cool so now it's like it is what it is though like some people live with cancer you know and they just have to deal with it. Some people have a fucking tumor in their head and they have to fucking deal with it. Everyone has something. We all have something that we have to fucking live our lives and deal with. So that's my thing. You don't let it consume you, just keep going. And your parents would not want you to consume it too. 
My mom, get over it. Stop being a little pussy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is what she would say. Sure. My dad would be like, go on, stop it. We're good, you know? So that's important, you know? And that's something I get here, you know what I mean? And, and that's why I like doing random rants because it gives me an outlet to kind of just spew, you know, shit. And then I get all these knuckleheads around me and, and it makes it... Um, it like, makes it uh, um, fun. It's like a place, for me, Random Rants represents freedom. Like I feel free. You know, it's in the middle of the afternoon, I'm in my fucking apartment, I got all these knuckleheads around me, and we're just dancing and having fun, and it's like, a, it's like therapy for me. Absolutely, you know, it's very cathartic. It. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, I mean, and for those who don't know, you lost your mom at the beginning of 2018, then your sister, and then your dad, and- And, and my that, best friend, Gary Garfinkel, who and that, used to run Showtime, who was a very good friend of mine. It was like, who's your best friend? Um, my wife would say her. <laughs> uh, a guy friend. A guy friend. I would say probably Derek Allen. Yeah, imagine yeah. if he got, I mean, God forbid, he got brain cancer and died two years after sure. that. Sure. Is that yeah. what happened, Gary? Yeah. It's fucking a nightmare. So, yeah, I've known him since I was 15. Yeah, so I mean, like, that's life. It's just fucking crazy. The yet Donald Trump, <laughs> yet Donald Trump <laughs> seems to be looking younger every day. I always say there's two type of people, or there's two people in this world that are that could say whatever the fuck they want, and that's Trump and Chappelle. And it seems like those are the two people. Burr is up there too. Yeah, Burr's pretty up there too. But he's no, he's very paranoid. Trust me, I had I had dinner with Burr like about a month ago, and he's paranoid because of this thing you know yeah social media and Tr uh, yeah i think he's a little bit more paranoid than Chappelle and and trump you know trump, they can is, do whatever trump they want. is wild <laughs> he is fucking wild like i can't believe the shit that comes out of his mouth it's so wild it, it, he, like, does, he says the fbi are criminals like scum i mean or scum, scum right scum what else did he just say why well, he's complaining about that girl winning time of the year oh, yeah. person greta she won greta Oh my God, he's yeah. so wild. But you know what? He, Fun to watch, though. He, Fun to watch. He found a way around it. If you just increase the number of things that you say that's ridiculous, people will eventually yeah, they, forget the. They that, forget that, all of it. Yeah. And, you know, years ago, you have one controversy with a president, like you know yeah. Clinton in the White yeah. House. If yeah. it's just one, then yeah. people focus on the one. Can't but if you suit. keep going, yeah. and like five or ten years from now, when they do the Donald Trump documentary, it's going to be it's, hilarious. <laughs> it's going to be more of a montage documentary. Dude, it's going to be longer than. Like, no, it's going to be food. like a montage doc yeah. because he said so much shit. It's like yeah. crazy. Yeah. And the fact that he hasn't gotten impeached with just all the other shit is just crazy. But I guess, you know, he's a fighter. You know, you put this New York crazy real estate guy as our president, and that's what you get, right? Do, you're very political. You've got a, a. I don't think that many people know that about you, but you, that there is a side of you that's very political. Or would you consider? Well, yourself? I'm entertained by it, and that's what I watch at night. Like, you know what I mean? I always, you know, I try to watch Netflix. I try to watch different specials. I try to watch movies. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, let's see what this fucking crazy guy's doing today. <laughs> let's go to Twitter. <laughs> no, let, no, let's go to like Fox and like CNN and MSN, and and it's just so um, it's entertaining to me, you know. So. Uh, you know, a lot of the liberals are funny to me because they talk so much shit about him, but yet they're making so much money off of him. Because I think because of Donald Trump, it gives them something to talk about. And when they have something to talk about, the ratings go up. Sure. So when, you know, Anderson Cooper or Don Lemon, they get a hold of a story, it gives them something to talk. It's almost like fucking that, that station HLN. Have you seen HLN? Sure. It's basically a station, if you haven't seen it, it's about murders. People get murdered. The whole It's 24 hours of murders. <laughs> That's all it is. So I'm thinking like, fuck, if there's no one murdering, these people are out of jobs. So anytime, I mean, it's disgusting to say, but I'm sure anytime there's a murder, these people get excited. They're like, oh shit, we got program. We could some, put some food on our table. I mean, it's true. 100%. It's disgusting. The, and we watch it. Like if you works. watch Netflix, every fucking show is about a killer. It's like, why are we so fascinated with people that kill people? so weird well I think the most the, the weirdest thing and I'm sure it's been talked about at some point was the guy that used to catch predators right oh, they, yeah. they would purposefully act like kids yeah. and rope in middle aged men right, right. that's just as dysfunctional as the, as the guy that's looking for it yeah like you you mean that you have someone on your staff that you pay to say dirty things as a child to creepers and then yeah. you feed off that for ratings and yeah. I mean don't get me wrong everyone watched it it well, was great the thing that's crazy about our world I think is that years ago we got our entertainment 
from TV and movies. And then reality show came, reality TV came, and then we got our entertainment from reality shows, the Big Brother or the Amazing Race or, you know, with the uh, real world on MTV. And now because of this, now everyone's got a fucking show. So everyone is, you know what I mean? So more people are interested in, you know, a fucking Chinese guy eating hot dogs or, you know, someone falling out of a tree than who's up for the Golden Globes this year. No one cares about who's up for Golden Globes. They want to see how many, you know, how many people, you know, you got fell off a fucking tractor, you know, or some shit. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I mean, wrong. we I mean, talked that's about where that. Our, but that's where our minds are. More people and people are like, well, this guy's got a million followers. I'm friends with a girl that lives out here. She's got a million followers, and all she does is shake her ass on the on the. She's like this, right? And she's got a million followers. And she that probably going? makes so much money right. just shaking her ass, and it's like people want to see that shit. She's here in Houston. Yeah, she's in Houston. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's her Instagram yeah, handle? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you right now. What's her Fuck, Instagram my shit's handle? Off right now. I'll Wonder if I know her. You probably know her, but um, she's nice. But it's like that's the way it is. So that's where we're at in our lo- in our business. Yeah, I mean, you know? when uh, what was that movie or a TV show, Mash? It's when it finale aired. It was like 120 million viewers. It was yeah. insane. Now the number one sitcom on TV, uh, that Big Bang Theory, they hit 20 million. 20 million. It's I mean that's yeah. literally a sixth of what it was yeah. in the 80s. So the content, 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 content. Correct. Yeah. Content, content, content. You yeah, don't, this girl right here. 2.4 million followers on Instagram. Jenna Shea? Yeah, she's cool. She's only one Shea is her Instagram. Only number one, S-H-E-A. 2.4 million followers. I think he said one before. That's 2.4. Yeah, 2.4. And Jesus. look at this is what she does. Look. I, right. I don't condone this behavior. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, I'm you a married man. You get her man. on your podcast. Oh, yeah. no. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, so that's what she gets she followers does, for. Yeah. She gets paid for that. Yeah, you- two point four million followers. I'm fucking getting out of the business. Why don't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should. Josh, will you film it? Will you film it? Yo, bro. Yo, bro. The next. But uh, good for her. You know, good for her. You know, I mean, everyone's got to make a living, and if she's happy, then fuck it, right? That's all that matters. So always on the couch. No, I don't look. This, no, look, see. <laughs> okay, cool. And your friends are there. How did you like develop that relationship? Right? We we're following each other, and then we started talking. I told her to come uh-huh. to the show tonight. She might come to the show. Maybe I'll bring out her on the stage. Yeah, do it. And do some booty, booty, booty. I don't have any ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not, not a stripper. But anyway, so I don't know. It's just, uh, but it's also the the internet and this whole world is awesome too. So it's sure. Like, and I'm not saying it's bad or good or anything. My thought process behind it is what it is. So you just kind of have to go with it. So fuck it. Right? But do you think it's less controlled now? Would you rather have come up now than when you did come up Great when it question. wasn't there? Great question. We, we had them for something. We knew, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely got to be better now than it was I before. Would think so, right? You can control for the instance, narrative. For instance, everything you just said, I don't think would have flown <laughs> yeah. on MTV in, in 1995. No, you can't. I mean, it's the Wild West. You know, there's no... I mean, if you look at Twitter, you know, you can be following Trump, and then the next thing you're following some porno star that's sucking a penis. Sure. It's like, you know what I mean? Is it's, that allowed on Twitter? Just like cut, yes. Cut the middleman, right? Porn's allowed on Twitter? Yes. I didn't know that. I know. Yeah. I don't really yeah. do Twitter. I'm more of an Instagram, Facebook guy. Yeah, well... The bourbon world is yeah. all on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so... But it is what it is, you know, because as a kid, you know, you, 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 know, you rush into your parents... You're rushing to your parents' bedroom, you grab the magazine, the porno, you hide, and now it's just right there. It's like, so. Yeah, phones, know. Jesus. And you've got kids too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I'm not looking forward to all that. I've got teenagers and so. it stresses me out. Luckily, the teenagers are girls. I feel like I have a few more years to be yeah. worried. If I had a 14-year-old son, I'd be freaking out. I'd be freaking out. Yeah. So I know uh, you brought a wine. I would love to taste it yeah, since sure. we've got a few minutes left. Yep. So, um, can you mix it into my smoothie? If you want to, I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You won an award for that, huh? Yeah. So it's a it's a pretty neat project. So uh, it looks very American, and that's kind of the the point. Uh, American so to kind of get everyone off of uh, the general disclaimer of wine of the I don't drink Italian wine. I don't drink 
whatever it may be that's not American from Napa. And so this is a, a Cabernet from Tuscany. So it's a... And anything from Tuscany that's wine is probably pretty good. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's exactly what it is. And so it's a really famous winemaker. It's a single vineyard. It's a uh, single vineyard called San Giovanni. And uh, on the label is Thelonious Monk. And so that's the other kind of neat plug into all of this. Modern pop culture. Yeah. So it's like uh, he was kind of the, the guy that made jazz what it was and or what it is today. But he started doing the late 50s and whatever else. So anyways, the really neat thing, and I for give for bringing this bottle. So this is the first round of prints. So the next round of print. So Texas got the first round because of a little Texas. Period, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so the second round of prints and the 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 ones that got the it's the same exact wine, same vintage, same everything. But uh the the ones that got the number twenty six from Wine Spectator this year for top one hundred wines in the world, uh there's other little neat attributes to the packaging that's pretty neat. One of the ones is there's a sound bar, and so Thelonious Monk did a live recording in Milan in 1961. And so it's the first wine where if you put on Spotify and take a little picture of the back, it uploads the, the song. live album he did in 1961 in Milan. So it's it's up a whole new audience for you know someone that might not know who it is, even though it's a really pretty dope ass picture. And so uh, there's a lot of fun things with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's delicious. Um, we'll cut that part out of the show for yeah. sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ, no one gives a fuck. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Doing, man? I'm you, just uh, kidding. I'm kidding. I love wine. No, actually, this is what I do. I love red wine. Red when wine. I, yeah, when I drink, I definitely like. There's I'll have like um, for sure. I have um. Wow, well, precocious. Yeah. Simply precocious. Well, you're no, being... I like to I like to drink red wine. Red wine when I have a, like a small piece of steak and some broccolini. Maybe a little, you know, oh, yeah. lobster mashed potatoes, yeah. you know? That's You talk about the food scene. I don't know how long you're... Well, no, you're going to Dallas tomorrow, but yeah. the food scene here in Houston is, is ridiculous. And yeah. next time you come through, you want a, an amazing steak, uh, let, let me know. There's Cheers. a few places Just here in town. Cheers. I knew we'd get them to do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we're not big on getting drunk at noon. That's something else. Oh, that's good. But nice. we... Thank you. Yeah, that's good. We enjoy a, a sip and kind of breaks the ice a little bit. Um, you had another movie coming out too. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, it's an animation film. It's called uh, The Big Trip, and it's uh, I play a bear. <laughs> so it's uh, it's the lead character, and it's um, it's cute. I just got asked to do it by um, by some people uh, by this guy Barry actually Barry Broker who who. Uh, Works over, um, ah, shit, I'm fuck, I fuck. It's a subsidiary of Lionsgate. It's, uh, shit, I forgot. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I forgot the name of the company, but, um, he asked me to do it and, um, through a friend, and so I did it. And it should be out, uh, this next year. One of your most well received, uh, films, at least from my generation, was the Goofy movie. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just the, the, uh, everyone. So Leaning it, Tower of Chi, sub, bro. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's it's interesting depending on who you tell Polly's coming on your show where yeah. they are in that yeah. age range yeah. is their most memorable memory of you uh, in fact my sister-in-law Katie uh, has not stopped messaging me on WhatsApp even now mm. while we're talking she's freaking out she's like tell him to say hi to me tell him to What's say my her name? name Katie Katie what Katie Hendry Katie Hendry, it's Polly Shore. I'm saying hi to you. <laughs> that would be twenty dollars on Cameo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The uh, yeah, so it's yes, just, I am on Cameo. You are but on not Cameo. for twenty dollars. <laughs> what are you on Cameo for? Uh, Two hundred. Nice, yeah. nice. The um, I get no, I get no requests. <laughs> <laughs> yet. yet yeah yet. right yeah we actually have a really decent sized footprint on the show so maybe we can get you out get get some cameo requests yes, out here of course so uh yeah. and speaking of which you also you're in dallas tomorrow you're doing two shows in dallas and uh stick with the dancing yeah two shows dallas two shows plano two shows in fort worth why not all two shows, shows in houston are, all the shows are sold out except for the second shows there's still a couple tickets left so why not two shows in houston I don't know. We just did. I never played this club before. Oh, really? Yeah, this was the first time. So Houston's I, comedy scene's blown up. Chappelle has been here pretty much like a dozen times the past month. Louis C.K. was supposed to be here, but then we got into the World Series. We're we're getting hit left and right with some huge names, and now Polly Shore's great, here. Great, great. So yeah, and then you're going to Lafayette, Indiana. 
Yes, I'll be um, all over oh, Fairview, Lafayette, and on Indi- uh, New Year's Eve, I'll be in Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Yeah. yeah. So December 27th and then the 31st. Yeah, and then I fly to Hawaii. Wow. Which will be cool. Are there any, uh, another question, are there any films that you are often hear as people's favorites that you maybe don't have the best memories or feelings towards? Like, is, are there any mm. that bother you? Stuff that you are loved that you don't l- want to be loved for? Or You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So if someone says they like, you know, uh, 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 Jury Duty. Mm. I don't know. I like Jury Duty. I yeah. liked Jury Duty. Yeah, I like Jury Duty. I thought it was cute. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, everything that I everything that I've done, I've I've enjoyed it when I was doing. You know, some I like better than others, but I don't know. I'm I'm just fortunate that uh, whatever I did, you know, has stuck. You know, several years later, so people still like it. With a so you talk about the decline of like some of the early fi- or the films in the '90s stuff that that maybe you shouldn't have done or something. Now they're looked back on as iconic. That mm-hmm. that uh, if you visit, I don't know if you read reviews of your Facebook page, but I just looked at your Facebook mm. page just to see comments. It's nothing but love mm. from thousands of people. Do you do you look back and think that reviews aren't nearly as important as the way that they're remembered? Because you're remembered in a positive way, mm. right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, like when you do anything in your career, you want to be able to read something about it and feel that it was positive. So when the movies came out and I got shit on by a lot of critics, at first I was like, who gives a fuck? But then the older I've gotten and the more the reviews came out and the more you know, scathing they were, I was like, well, this isn't cool. And then now that so much time has passed, even I think those critics are coming back to these films saying, you know what, those films are actually really fun. Yeah. And and yeah, so it makes me feel good that, you know, that, you know, to this day, people actually really enjoy them. I mean, those films have supported me my whole career. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I don't want to say I'm the Billy Joel of comedy, but that's a good <laughs> quote. But I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll retire on my hits. You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck. I mean, if I have another hit, cool. If I don't, cool. It's like... I have my hits. People like the hits. It helps me sell. T- it helps me sell. T- sounds like I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. I am. Smoothie. <laughs> I think he spiked my shit with acid, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> You're like Ari Shafir. <laughs> We're gonna be like the new Bron. We're gonna be a Bron- Bronx Tales bombers. No. Um. What was I saying? <laughs> I sh- shit. He had one sip of wine. <laughs> one sip Josh, of wine. Josh, help me. What did I say? I don't know. You, you, I don't know, bro. You Billy Joe of comedy. Yeah. Billy Joel of comedy. Well, I have my hits, you know, and um, and I could tour on them the rest of the year. You know what's kind of cool is I went to Saudi Arabia to do shows, and they knew me in Saudi Arabia. I guess it's not called Encino, it's called Beheaded Man or something. <laughs> Out there, no. Oh wow, you can't do that. Is that too harsh? No, do whatever okay. you want. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no, Saudi was cool. Saudi was pretty cool. People were really cool in Saudi. I was nervous though. You know, you can't drink in Saudi. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, you not well. Yeah. I mean, you can't. I mean, it, unless you go into a side thing and you do it. But is that worth it? Right. No, you know I get what, what you're mean? saying. Is it yeah. worth getting arrested in Saudi for drinking a glass of wine? So that was really hard for me. And you can't swear on stage, so that was hard for me. And um, and you can't really hit on chicks, so that's kind of hard for me. So it's like, it was, but it was cool. All my freedoms were taken from me. And I actually, at first. <laughs> but they remembered me. <laughs> no, but at first I was like bummed, but then the, the more time I spent there, I'm like, ah, this is actually a good thing. You know, it's a good thing to get, because we're such pigs in America. Yeah. America's, we're pigs. We can eat wherever, we can drink wherever. We, we have such access to everything. And that's what I think is cool about people that go away to prison, they get out. <laughs> what? Well, no, think about it. I think everyone should go to prison. <laughs> no, listen. A little bit. What? No, I think er- even if you didn't do a crime, I think everyone should go to prison. <laughs> Jesus. Prison for like a week, maybe a week every two years. <laughs> Kind of like, you know, in Israel. In Israel, you have to join the army. Sure. Right? And in America, you have to go to prison once every two years. Reason being, it, it, it makes you appreciate, you know, the freedoms, walking down the street, ordering whatever you can. And that was cool for Saudi for me, is I, it took away a lot of the stuff I normally just, like, you know. Take for granted. Take for granted. Yeah. So then, 
you know what I mean? And, and then once you come I back, got back you... to America, I was like, oh my God, this this wine tastes so good. Oh my God, this is so good. Like, oh my God, that girl's not wearing a sheet over her head. Yeah. You know, because they do that. They wear the burkas over Look their head. Look at all those ankles. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, wear, they wear the sheet, sheet over her head. I tried to take pictures with the Saudi women, and they wouldn't take pictures of me. Yeah. With me. Well, they'll get and in I'm trouble, like, right? You yeah. won't get in trouble. They'll get in trouble. No, yeah. they just, they can choose to do it or choose not to do it. But I'm thinking if I take a picture of you, no one's going to see you anyways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no one's going to know. Except for your eyes. Oh, Susie, your pupils are so pretty. Yeah. You know, it's like you can't really see. So, but I got a, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a nice experience for me. I liked being over there. Well, I know we're wrapping up. We've got maybe five minutes left. I found a bottle from your birth year. I mm. thought it would be great if we had a sip. This has been sitting in the bottle since oh. the day, since before you were born uh, in wow. 1968. So, wow. so it's. Am uh, I allowed to take this with me, or is this yours? You, if you'd like it, yeah, you can take of course. It. Yeah. So, oh. Josh, you like this stuff, right? Yep. It's gonna be pretty. Yep. You like a bourbon fan? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. it's been sitting in the bottle for 52 years, right? Jesus. So 50, 51. So I'm gonna. Give you a pour first. Okay. And I'll keep it light because I know it's early. This bourbon? This is bourbon. Old Crow. And uh, yeah, so there you go. I'll put it on a nice little hat. Cheers, man. Thanks so much for doing the show, Polly. Uh, What's next for you? What, what what other future projects you want to work on? Because I was listening to your podcast a few years back, and you had mentioned the one man show yeah. years before it actually came to fruition. Yeah. Is there something the next thing you want to work on? Really? Because um, in terms of hard working, mm. you have not stopped putting out con- yeah. you've been constantly every year been putting out multiple projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what's the next dream project for you? More animation? Films? I think I want to go to culinary school. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. You're a yeah. big foodie? Yeah, because I've, I've been a pretty good cook my whole life because my parents divorced when I was little and I always cooked for my mom. I'm like so a natural before? yeah, I'm like a natural cook. So I was thinking like it might be cool to go to culinary school to like really learn how to cook. Yeah. I already have it in me. So I think that would be cool. You could save yourself a lot of time and money and effort just working with chefs, man. Working with what? Working chefs. with chefs. Well, like, yeah, you can get yeah. little stages, man, because of who you are. That's what John Favreau did. Will, like, John Favreau became, yeah. started working with. cut through all of it. Yeah. And culinary schools are incredibly expensive now. Oh, skip, wow. skip, yeah. skip the school portion yeah. and do an actual, a video series. Like John Witherspoon. We're learning, man. I mean, shit, get paid for it too, yeah. John Witherspoon did this show two weeks before he passed. It was the last interview he did before wow. he passed. Uh, but he had a cooking show he did himself, put it up on YouTube, where he would just make one recipe. Mm. And if you had guests, celebrity chefs that would do it 100% mm. and actually cook with you and no, do like, yeah, like, they're kind of teaching me, right? Yeah, te- teach you a, a dish. You know, l- you love steak and broccolini. Mm-hmm. Get a chef that's famous for it. Have them come on. Wow. Do it. Do a YouTube video of Polly, Polly's kitchen. Polly's, you know, and then cook a dish. Put it up. I, I bet that would be amazing. Well, and I don't learn. know how to. How do you get a hold of these guys? Well, uh, I, can, I can help, but yeah, but yeah, I, I cover a lot of the U.S. What are you, what are you doing? Why are you raising your hand? They they work yeah. they work in this industry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they big in yeah. big in wine and chef and boy are we's we could call it. Oh my gosh, Dude. God Dude. Damn it. boy chef are we's. Boy are we's, bro. Yeah, you could totally do that. You know you know how like they also the um the uh, uh a lot of the celebrities they have their own strain. You know, like Snoop Dogg's got his own strain of pot. Sure. Mike Tyson. Yeah. I was thinking about doing my own polyshore's masturbation cannabis cream. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where you masturbate and then after your dick stays high. Because at least you can do for the little guy after you pulled him and choked him, dude. You know what I mean? There's a joke I do, too. Okay, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. you. Watch That's Random right. Rants. Hopefully, if people are watching yep. this. Random Rants, you can find it on iTunes. You can also find the video portion on YouTube. Yeah. And thank you for having me. Thank you for reaching out. Absolutely. And we'll see you at the Secret Show. Secret Group. Secret Group tonight. Absolutely. And then I'll be in Dallas all weekend, weekend long. long. And I'll be at a Twin Peaks near you. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to go down there and get some uh we'll get some whiskey down there later guys. Cheers. Bye. Prost. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. Thank you.
when you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.